What is going on, everybody? So I'm back again today. I'm um, going to be bringing you guys a 1.19.2 Minecraft server tutorial. So I just want to say real quick, if they do update to 1.19.3, it's the same exact process to install the server. So I'm going to get right into it. Uh, first things first, uh, we're going to check and make sure that you guys have the right version of Java on your computer to even run this server. So the minimum requirement, you know, for Minecraft 1.19 or it's really 1.18 and above is Java 17. So to check that, what I want you to do is open up a command prompt. If you don't know how to do that, just click start, type in CMD, and it's right here and you can just click it. And I want you to type in Java and then the hyphen and then version. And this is going to tell you the version of Java that's currently running. Uh, when you type in the Java command and you can see for me it's Java version 17 if you don't see that you need to go and download Java 17 I'll have a link for that in the description the web page looks like this so you're gonna wanna grab this one right here the Windows uh, x64 installer and you're gonna wanna download that and install that version of Java and hopefully when you run that Java command you're gonna see Java 17 that's what you need so we're going to get right into getting the actual server so we're going to go right to minecraft.net and you're going to want to uh, go to the downloads page for it so it'll be minecraft.net uh, just type a slash download on the end of uh, the url and i'm going to have a direct link to this page for you guys but this is where i like to grab the jar from you can grab it through the launcher or you can grab it on the website but i'm going to grab it off the website right now so you can see there's a link here to download the Minecraft server 1.19.2 uh, jar. That's what we want. So we're going to click on that. And you can see it's going to start downloading over here. Sometimes Chrome, if it tells you that this file might be harmful, all that's saying is that it can't validate what's inside of that jar file, so it doesn't know if it's malicious or not. We know it's coming straight from Mojang, so we're not worried. But if it does ask you if you want to keep this file or not, click Keep. It didn't do that for me this time, but sometimes it will. So drag this file onto your desktop. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag it all the way down to the corner and then drag it out into my desktop. And this is our server jar. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a folder. This is going to be our working directory. We're going to put all of our files into here. So we're just going to name this 1.19.2 or IM. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to drag the server jar into that folder and then I'm going to open up that folder. So now we have to write a batch script to launch this server. You can just double click the server and run it, but it's it's only going to launch it with the default uh, arguments. It's only going to be limited to, I believe, two gigabytes of memory and it's going to launch with uh, that Minecraft server GUI that we don't really want. So I'm going to show you guys how to write a batch script so you can have better control over your server. Um, so do that by creating a new text document. It's real simple. Just right click new text document. And we're going to name this start because this is going to be the uh, script that starts our server. So just leave it start.txt for now. And if uh, you guys don't see these uh, file extensions here, see how it says .txt for me right here? Uh, make sure that in the view tab at the top you have file name extensions checked. If you don't have that checked, see how it won't have the .txt or the .jar on the end? You're going to want to see those because in a minute we're going to change the .txt. But for now, just open this up in Notepad or whatever, and we're going to type in a command here, and we're going to it's going to be the Java command. So we're going to say Java, and then we have to figure out uh, well, how much memory do you want your server to use. I'm going to start mine with 2 gigs, so that's 2,048 megabytes. So I'm going to say uh, XMS, which is going to be the initialization amount. I'm going to say 2048 megabytes. And then I'm going to put the same amount in for my max memory, 2048 megabytes. And then I'm going to type tack jar because we're trying to open up a jar file. And this next part is quite important. Uh, this is what trips a lot of people up. The next word that we're going to type in this command right here needs to be this file name because we're telling Java to open a jar file with this amount of memory and then we're telling it the jar file to open. And the jar file that we want it to open is called server.jar. 
and it's right there. So we can just type in server.jar. And that's basically our whole command. We're going to add one argument to the end of it called no GUI. That's going to pass this to the server jar so that when it does start, it doesn't launch with our uh, Minecraft uh, server GUI that we, we don't want to see. That's just going to save on some resources because we can literally do everything we need from the console. Um, and then add a pause. Just hit enter and then add a pause on the next line <laughs> with only one P. And what's that what that is going to do is if uh, there's an error at all when we try to run the server instead of the command window just opening erroring and then closing and you not even knowing what happened it's going to pause after the error so it's going to let you read all that text that pops up and you'll be able to make sense of what happened and fix the problem so i'm going to leave the pause in there and then we can go file save and then we can close this out and the next step's kind of important we want to rename this txt file Okay, we want to take the TXT off the end of it, and we want to change it to start.bat, and hit enter. And it's going to say, if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? We know what we're doing, so we want to click yes. And now you can see that this is now a Windows batch file instead of a normal text file. So now, when we double click on the start.bat, it's going to run that script we just wrote, and it's going to launch our server. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And you can see uh, in the console over here, this is called the server console, and uh, it's doing a bunch of stuff. It's unpacking a bunch of files. If we look over here in our folder, you can see that we now have a libraries folder, a logs folder, a versions folder. It spit out a uh, end user license agreement.txt. We're going to have to go in here in a second. And you can see it also made a server.properties file, which is where we can go in and configure a bunch of settings for our server. So come back over here and you can see that it ran the pause command and it stopped. This window would have just disappeared if we didn't have that pause command in there. And you can see now that it paused, we can go and read you need to agree to the EULA, the end user license agreement, in order to run the server. So we have to go to that file that it created over here, and it says uh, for more info. And then it hit, uh, hit pause, click any key to continue, and it should close out this window. So now we need to come over to where it says EULA.txt in this folder. We need to open this up, and uh, just edit this with, you can do it with notepad, and change this false right here to a true. This is going to basically agree to their terms of service and let you start your server. So save that. If you want to go and read it, you can go to this link right here and uh, you can actually read what you're agreeing to. But once you set this to true and you save it, you should be all set. You can double click on this start.bat again and it should launch the server all the way up. And uh, create our worlds, our spawn area, and uh, yeah, that's, at that point the server is basically fully functional. So we're just going to let this load up, and uh, when we're done, I'm going to show you how to get onto it. Okay, so you can see over here that it's, it's done, it's completed. Uh, it says done down here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop the server real quick. So the correct way to stop your Minecraft server is uh, to type in the stop command. Don't click the X up here, because if you do that, uh, you can actually lose some data. It won't save your worlds, or it might not save your player data, and you may end up... Uh, you know, rolling back a little bit, losing a little bit of time or losing some stuff that you built or some stuff that's in your inventory. Nobody wants to do that. So if you type stop command, just STOP and hit enter, you can see that it's going to stop the server. It's going to save the players, save the worlds, and it's going to shut everything down gracefully so that we don't have any issues. Um, we can uh, hit any key to continue. It's going to close out the console. And I just wanted to show you so. Real quick, if you go into server properties, a lot of people have issues editing this file, but it's super easy. Just right click it, and if you don't see edit here, come down to open with, and just click on notepad. And it should open the file up in notepad for you. And all I have a video that explains what a lot of these settings do. Uh, I'll link it up in the right. But uh, I'm not going to go through them all now. We're just going to come down here, and we're going to change uh, the message of the day. So let's find where it is, right here. So we're gonna change this. We're just gonna change this to voice devs tutorial. Ooh. Tutorial server. We're gonna save that. We're gonna X out of here. 
So uh, you'll see that the changes you make are going to be reflected on the server itself. So we're going to launch the server back up again uh, just by double clicking our start.bat. And once this launches all the way back up, I'm going to show you how to actually get in uh, to the server. Now, if you're hosting uh, this server right here, like if this command window is on the same computer that you're trying to play Minecraft on, so let's say you're trying to join, uh, your client is on the same computer as the server, so you're trying to join the server on the same computer. Real simple, you don't have to type in any IP addresses or anything crazy, you can just type in a zero. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. but. Because I'm hosting this server on a virtual machine, I'm going to need to get the IP address of this computer, this server. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. And it's super simple. You have to open up a command prompt again. So type in CMD and open up your command prompt. And just type in IP config. Just like that and hit enter. And you're going to see down here, it's going to say IPv4 address. And this is the number that we want. 10.0.0.123 is the number for me. It will be different for you. So you need to make sure you go in and check this if you're trying to connect to your server from a different computer. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make that real clear. But since the server is launched all the way back up, we can go hop into our Minecraft client and we can try to join. Okay, so now we're in Minecraft. You can see we're in 1.19.2. So if we go into multiplayer, and uh, you can see I already have the server added here, but if I delete it, and we want to re-add it, uh, here we go. You can see I'm going to type in the same IP address that I got out of that command prompt. So it would have been 10.0.0.123. And that should be the IP address for my server. It's going to ping the server, and look, it's going to respond with voice dev tutorial server, which is what we had typed into the server.properties file. So you can see that that's reflected on the server now. And if we double click on it, we should be able to join the server, no problem. So it's going to sign me in. And look, we are on our very own Minecraft 1.19.2 server. So a lot of people ask me, all right, I have my own server set up. Now I want to get creative mode. I want to have cheats. I want to do all this stuff. How do I uh, set myself as a server operator? Because if you try to type in, uh, I don't know, the game mode command right now, it won't let you. See, it's going to say it's going to say you don't have permission or it doesn't know what's going on. But uh, what we have to do is we have to give ourselves permission to use that. The way that we do that is we have to go back to that server console I was talking about. So. I'm going to hop back over to the server console. Okay, now that we're back at the server console, uh, we can type in the command OP and then the username of the person you want to set as an operator. For me, it's VoiceDev. So OP VoiceDev, and it says made VoiceDev a server operator. So now if we go hop back to the Minecraft client, you can see that in the chat it says server made VoiceDev a server operator down here. So now if I try that game mode command, I can set myself to creative. So that would be how you uh, give yourself cheats or you set yourself to operator status on your own server. So the next question I usually get asked is, how do I get friends on my server? Well, uh, you usually have to port forward. And what that means is you need to have administrative access to your router. Because what you need to do is allow connections from the internet to come through your router and be forwarded to the Minecraft server itself. So that when people connect to your network they are able to find your Minecraft server. This takes a little bit of networking knowledge, and I do have a video explaining the basics of that and exactly how to do it. Um, I'm not gonna go into it here because it's a little bit out of the scope of how to set up the actual server software itself, but yeah, it's, it's also a little bit different depending on what router you have, so it's hard to make a tutorial that will satisfy everybody. But I do have one for Xfinity, and uh, I do have a basic explanation of what port forwarding is and why you need it. And I will also link those in the top right and in the description. If this video helped any of you, uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for future videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll try to get back to as many people as I can. I also have a Discord server you can join if you have any questions. I have a tech support team in there that will try their best to help you out. Um, I also run an anarchy server called TQMC. The IP address is tqmc.org if you want to join. I'll be updating that to 1.19.2 very soon. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for watching and I will see you in the next video.